I have been a proud Club Penguin member since 2007, and for this sentence I am banned? They say the words that led to my ban in the ban message, but it doesn't make any sense. Just to break things up, we have on the only person who misspeaks more often than me. The foot and mouth king himself. Jordan Jameson Peterson. There he is. Looking very goofy in this shot, I might add. So, um, my oomphy, my oomphy on Twitter, uh, he got, okay. Can, is he, can I even find the damn tweet? No, because it got deleted. Basically, so Jordan Peterson, who ever since his um, brain damage worsened with the last stunt, um, has gotten more vindictive on Twitter. Uh, he, he threw out this banger of a tweet. Remember when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breast removed by a criminal physician. And it's a link to an article where Elliot Page says, like, he's proud of a show that he did or something. It's, a, it's like, it's literally Elliot Page saying something like, I'm proud to have worked with people on this thing. Remember when pride was a sin? And Elliot Page just had her breath, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, like, it's like Mad Libs. Like, it's, it's not only is it stupid, it's deranged and unrelated. Um, and he did set this tweet to have only, um, only people he follows able to reply. So I replied, and I made fun of him. And then later the tweet got reported into oblivion. And now he's suspended off Twitter, and now he's turning his suspension from Twitter into his own personal Joker moment, you know. Really prominent philosophy stuff right here. Really, really high-tier intellectual collegiate professor behavior right here. You know, got had a brain melt, got mad on Twitter, got banned for it. Um, this, this, <laughs> this is why I left the left. Yeah, he's been hired by the Daily Wire. The Daily Wire is huge. It is a, it is a, a huge thing. Anyway, let's, let's give him a look, you know? Jordan Peterson, intellectual of an era. Let's see. Surely his arguments can't be defeated by um, a painkiller-addled, sleep-deprived sociology bachelorette. A few days ago, I penned an irritated tweet in response to one of the latest happenings on the increasingly heated culture war front in response to the decision of an act. The happening was that Elliot Page said that he was proud to do a thing. It wasn't in response to anything in particular. Nothing really happened. He just kind of. Actress, actor named Ellen Elliot Page. I am employing this awkward and impossible naming style because it is now apparently mandatory and am probably doing it wrong nonetheless. What? It's, it's impossible to call. It's a name. You just choose names. You can't. Okay. The, the people, the people who will, the, the conservatives will do the whole like, I, you can't gender a trans wom woman of her. That's a biological impossibility. Like, that's retarded enough, okay? But the, the people who are like, you can't call trans people by their preferred names, it's a name. You just name people things. There's no such thing as a biological name. You just choose names. That's where all names come from. They're just chosen arbitrarily. It's not, you, it's, it's uh, 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 this, uh, this impossible naming scheme, Ellen and Ellie, I, I don't, am I doing this right? Like, you know, again, like, I, obviously he acts in bad faith all the time, but he is just brain damaged enough that it's actually difficult to tell. Should, can, should I, okay, if I'm just making fun of him, this is going to get tiring because he's a very, very funny, funny, funny guy. Should I address this to JP fans? I think I will. Okay, moving, hey, let, Hello, Jordan Peterson fans who angrily came to this future video segment to dislike it and watch me to think about how you're smarter than me because your room is cleaner than mine. Which, it's not! I did the laundry yesterday. It owned. Let's watch. As you're doing it wrong is the whole point of what is being made mandatory. But also, I'm mm -hmm. trying to make a point. Mm -hmm. I've essentially been banned from Twitter mm -hmm. as a consequence. Mm -hmm. I say banned... Although technically I have been suspended, but the suspension will not be lifted unless I delete the hateful tweet in question, and I would rather die than do that. 
Ah, oh, dude. This is what Jordan Peterson looks like. Anything he encounters something that he doesn't fully understand. It's absolutely astonishing. It's phenomenal, you know? I, I actually feel like, because this has always been his thing, right? Like, even back when he got popular in 2016, when he lied about the Bill C-16 shit in Canada, he was like, I will be dragged away by professors and shot in the back of the head. My entire family will be to death and buried in mass graves, but I would rather bear this burden than suffer the indignity of calling a, a he, she, trans, male, she, you know? And then, like, nothing happened, nobody got arrested, and it was all made up. I feel like JP's main thing from now on, I feel like it should just be him, like, building elaborate masochistic saw contraptions that he'll threaten to employ on himself if anything happens. You know what I mean? Like, somebody somebody opens, like, a bistro in his neighborhood with the progressive pride flag hanging on it, and, he like, he spends six weeks building, like, a saw that will lower if he pulls this lever, and he's sitting there in, like, an empty room with blackness behind him. I'll do it! I, I would ra I would rather lose this arm than <laughs> live in this neighborhood where the tyrannical reign of progressive ideology, you know, it's just and 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 it, this and he keeps that going like he just makes like forty videos of that you know like variations on that until a new thing happens and he like scrambles to build some kind of new contraption you know like uh like uh yeah like some kind of some kind of wind tunnel where, where bits of debris get blown through it and lacerate him to death or something. I, I don't fucking know. It's good, though. I really like this bit. You're supposed to appeal to JP fans? Ah, that's right. Ah, I forgot. Okay, sorry. We're appealing to JP fans. And hopefully it will not come to that, although who the hell knows in these... <laughs> <laughs> this Video recorded with phone, portrait mode instead of landscape mode. It's his hand shaking. He has a gun pressed to his temple. He tur he rotates to turn the the camera's uh, uh, the view, and you see that he's uh, standing right in front of a gender neutral bathroom. Tears are streaming down his face. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just very funny. <laughs> okay, okay. Arguments. We're okay. Appealing to fans. I'm sorry. Increasingly strange days. What was it that I said that caused such a fuss? And that fuss is just beginning. Uh -huh. And even more importantly and complexly, what exactly was it that I said that resulted in the ban? Here's the tweet in question. Oh, Remember sorry. when pride was a sin? And Ellen Page just had her breasts removed by a criminal physician. Well, I think um, I think misgendering someone is actually a special category of Twitch, uh, Twitch, Jesus, Twitter, TOS now. Um, so that would be it, right? Yeah. So I guess there, there you go, right? Yeah. Also, this is suggesting that getting top surgery is a is a criminal act, which which is pretty psychotic. And then a link to a story that detailed out the happenings. The response from Twitter, quote, violating our rules against hateful conduct. You may not promote violence against, threaten, or harass other people on the basis of race, ethnicity, talking to me national like origin, sexual orientation, Jeez. gender, gender identity, religious affiliation, age, disability, or serious disease. By clicking delete, you acknowledge that your tweet violated the Twitter rules. Delete. Uh -huh. If you think we've made a mistake, submit an appeal to us. Isn't, isn't this like basically um, a satire of how conservatives behave already? Like, this is literally like, this is the most basic and obvious Twitter ban of all time. Any other account would have been just flat out deleted, but his got a suspension until he deletes the tweet. You know? It's like, like this, I, this, I know this video is going to be full of chest puffing about how society is falling apart because violating the TOS on a website can lead to you having to delete the TOS violating thing. But the tone that he's taking with it is so fucking self-serious that it actually borders on like ironic meta commentary, you know, like, like some kind of strange modern Tim and Eric skit. Or like the Tim Heidecker stuff where he makes fun of Joe Rogan, except this is the bit where he gets canceled. 
And the cancellation is like someone at a protest yelled at him and said, stop being a bigot. And he's going to turn that into like the forefront of the Fourth Reich or something. Like he's going to use that energy. Oh yeah, he'll probably delete the tweet or, or like Twitter will back off soon enough and he'll go back on Twitter and call fat women ugly or something. Please note that should you do so, your account will remain locked while we review your appeal. Let's take this apart. First, not that complicated. It is clearly the case that I did not promote violence against or threaten anyone with my missive. So that leaves the. Um, I think you could make a pretty strong argument that claiming it's criminal to provide top surgery to trans men is a kind of implicit threat of violence. I don't think that's why the tweet got deleted. It's because of the misgendering. That's the reason why. Um, but I think you can make that argument, yeah. It, it's the same thing that um, anti-choice activists have been doing for decades. The arguably lesser sin of harass. Let's assume, since I wasn't informed, that that was the crime. And further, harassment on the basis of so-called gender identity, since Twitter did not do me the favor of actually specifying my crime, and there are many possibilities on that front, we unfortunately have to guess at why this has occurred, and that's actually a big problem in and of itself, and also indicative oh of the utter carelessness of the Twitter organization with regard to the propriety of its own sensorial actions. I have been a proud Club Penguin member since 2007. And for this sentence, I am banned. They say the words that led to my ban in the ban message, but it doesn't make any sense. I can't, I can't do a good Kermit. I, it's hard. It's hard. You know, I should at least know exactly what I did wrong. If I am required to acknowledge that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. What rules you sons of bitches? <laughs> exactly. Precisely. <laughs> because such things matter when the accusations start flying. This is what every VGG ban appeal reads like, by the way. Yeah, this this guy has like the ultimate energy of the worst people who submit unban requests. I know because I used to handle them too, and I get emails from time to time. You'll get an email being like, I was banned for three days for so-called threats of violence and harassment. And then it follows with like eight paragraphs, and it's like... And at that point, you keep them banned on principle, because at that point, like, they're, just, they're not good for the server anyway, you know? This happens a lot, guys. The internet's crazy, right? So what did I say that might constitute harassment? Well, many things, hypothetically. Let's begin with, remember when pride was a sin? Although that is merely a factual statement, because under the old rules, applicable even a decade ago, pride was a sin. Wait, what? Applicable even a decade ago? Does he think that the Ten... Wait, d wait, not even the Ten Commandments. Does, does he think that the... the biblical... standard of... 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 of cardinal sin application was part of law in 2012? Wait, when did Seven Deadly Sins come out? Hold on. All right. The anime came out in 2014. That's that's not more than 10 years ago. But the manga also came out in 2014? Wait, did they run in parallel? How the fuck does that work? Oh, maybe maybe Seven Deadly Sins the anime was what ruined society's respect for the cardinal sins. I think that might be it cuz it looks like shit. Every time I see anything from the show, it looks like dog shit. That might be it. Ten years ago, Seven Deadly Sins had not yet come out. And we were better for it. And had been recognized as perhaps the cardinal sin for thousands of years previously. It still might be regarded as unacceptable to the woke authoritarian moralists who now insist, for example, that we celebrate... Pride. Wait, how is he calling other people moralists when he's bemoaning that other people no longer care about morals? Wait, okay, right, we're supposed to be appealing to JP fans. Hey, JP fans, your guy's retarded, like literally. He's calling other people moralists in the same sentence that he's claiming that society has morally degraded 
because we no longer respect the seven deadly sins? Which doesn't... That's The seven deadly sins aren't like a code of ethics. That like, not even Christians believe that. Like, Christians will still say stuff like, I'm proud of you, son. Considering all Elliot Page said was, I'm proud of the work we did or whatever. Like that, yeah, it's not, yeah. Pride month, not hour or day or week, <laughs> but month, and to have literally called it Pride Month. Pride Century. Instead of LGBT plus month or whatever else alphabet acronym which is currently insisted upon as the only acceptable enlightened terminology. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that only one iteration of the alphabet soup acronym is acceptable. I don't think I've ever heard that from a lefty either. People have done LGBT, LGBTQIA, LGBTQ, LGBT+, LGBTQ+, LGBT2STQIAA+. <laughs> I think most people just use, like, LGBTQ+. And I prefer queer. It's just funnier. I don't regard pride as a virtue. It has been classically regarded as a sin. I don't see that sexual orientation or sexual desire of any sort is something to celebrate or... He's, he's literally, like, accusing others of moralists right now while he's talking like fucking, um, Archduke Frodo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. You know? These vile gypsies will burn... <laughs> These moralist gypsies... Yeah. Like, Jesus. To take Frollo, not in. Frodo. And so what I said was merely a fact. Now, it's possible that I hurt someone's feelings because I pointed out that pride goes before, for example, a fall. But I don't <clears> care <throat> about that. Would do it again. And also consider... Careful, Vosh, that's a slur. I love slurs. You don't need to tell me. I said it because it was a slur. Because it's the only slur that you could get away with in Disney films back before the woke mob took over. Yeah. My duty to warn those Duty. who are about to fall into a pit that the path they are on leads suddenly downhill. Again, calling other but people moralists. that was probably not the reason that I was banned from Twitter. Although, as I said, I am in the position of having to guess. Next phrase to interrogate. And Ellen Page. Now, why did I stop there? For, for dramatic effects? because you're trying to make money right now off of tribalian? Because in all likelihood, it was this seemingly innocuous phrase, including the name of a well-known actress. There, I'm in trouble again. I, this has, like, always been the weakest brand of conservative, like, um, sympathy baiting, where, where, like, they're such cowards, they don't even stand by the shit they believe in. They'll just alternate rapidly between saying stuff that they know is offensive and going like, oops, there I go. Like, it's a very weak attempt at humor, and it's, it, it's, all, it's an effort to, like, establish plausible deniability when it comes to your intentions. But, yeah, it just comes across as very insecure, you know? Like, he, he wants to make sure that his new audience on Daily Wire knows he is very, very, very committed to being epic and offensive. Very Ricky Gervais. Mr. Jordan Peterson. I swear JBP used to be better at this. No, the reason why I'm calling him brain damage is because I literally think that it's the brain damage. He actually did used to be better than this. He is definitely meaner and stupider than he used to be. Um, 100%. I actually, I wish somebody could, like, lock him in a room and tell him to write, like, a short article on something. Because I feel like if you could compare it to his earlier writings, it is, like... I, I don't think he could write the same way that he used to be able to. I legitimately do think that his brain is damaged, you know? That likely resulted in my ban. I committed the fatal crime of what has come to be known in the appalling sensorial terminology of the insane activists as dead naming, which is the act of referring to someone who has transitioned, another hated piece of jargon and slogan, by the name and... Wait, hated by who? You? You can't say something is hated when you're saying, when you feel that way. You're, you're, you're implying that it's broadly felt that way. Okay. By the inference, the gender, really the sex, that everyone knew them by previously, and in the case of Ellen slash Elliot, that millions of people recognized and knew. 
So I should have either called him, her, they, Elliot, instead of Ellen, although, as we will discover, that would have made it impossible for me to say what I wanted to and need to say in the remaining phrases. Well, I'll go on. I'm, I'm curious now. Mr. Peterson, what, uh, what, wh what, what were you only able to say by dead naming and misgendering Elliot? I, I, where the narrative construction of the tweet was so precise, so fastidiously careful that any alteration to its semantic construction, semantic, uh, would, would, have, would have led to a complete oblivion of meaning, you know. Not that such a problem would bother those who are objecting to my speech in the first place. The next phrase is, just wait, in the first place. Phrases, not that such a problem would bother those who are objecting to my speech in the first place. Oh, so wait, he's saying I had to misgender him so that I could then do the next bigoted thing. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's saying, listen, it was critical that I misgender him because you see, I was getting ready to misgender him a second time. And it would have been confusing if I had only misgendered, misgendered him the second time instead of the, instead of, instead of both times. It would have been confusing. Not bad, Jordan. It's a pretty good argument. If you're brain damaged. The next phrase is, just had her breasts removed. This bit suffers from a very similar problem. I employed the forbidden pronoun her when Elliot, Ellen, is now to be regarded as a he. Okay, I'm actually, I'm actually going to make a genuine appeal to JP fans. They're probably not watching anymore because I've just been making fun of him. You have to understand that this is um, anti-intellectual sophistry, right? Jordan Peterson is predicating and following every single thing that he says with highly charged, um, highly semantic, like, um, essentially jargon. A lot of this doesn't, like, it, it doesn't elucidate meaning, it obfuscates it. Um, everything that he says has to be dripping with, with this, like, um, this, this politically charged, like, follow along with me as I tell you what emotions you're supposed to feel. Um, a logical way of presenting this, like, if you, if you really wanted to do this, if you really wanted to make the argument that JP is about to make, then you can make it very simply, okay? Jordan Peterson will literally just say this. I'm not going to do the accent. Um, hi, my name is Jordan Peterson. Here is the thing with the tweet, okay? Uh, people are mad at me because I misgendered Elliot Page right here, but the issue is, is that I do not think that Elliot Page is a man. I believe that Elliot Page is a woman. And semantically, having a statement which reads, the man's breasts were removed, is confusing and doesn't properly illustrate the issues uh, with the uh, subject at hand, as I am trying to demonstrate, you know. If you wanted to, if JP wanted to, he could actually like lay out the premises of this argument and then explain why he feels they're justified, but he can't because this argument is retarded. He is a retard. His argument is retarded. Everything that I just said is retarded. Um, it makes no sense whatsoever. It is literally a like a completely reliant on um, on on you being a retard too. Basically, like you have to listen to this and go and like nod your head, sort of stupidly, with big wet eyes, just just your mouth slightly open, drooling a little bit. You know, like that's what you need to be to get this. That's where you are. That's what you are. Um, that's all you'll ever be. It's very, very dumb. It's very sad, and your parents are disappointed. Um, the argument is bad. That's why he has to lead into it with all this, like, super heavy politically biased stuff, which is, again, it's fairly anti-intellectual. Um, yeah. Bosch, uh, please keep focus. Never. And also kind of fascist. It doesn't really matter if this is fascist, because it, it fails on its own premises, right? Like, even if you're politically fascist, this is still a bad argument. If you believe in the concept of logic, this is a bad argument. If you believe in the idea that it's possible for, like, a logical argument to be delivered, this is a bad argument, you know? You don't even have to touch the politics here. That's why I haven't even talked about trans stuff yet, you know? Um, I don't even think that I'll need to. Jordan Peterson's arguments are so bad here that I don't even think he reaches the level of being able to discuss the issue of whether or not trans people are the identity they claim they are. He, he doesn't even rise to that point. Like, he's... It's, it's, it's like the trans debate is built upon a, a, like a, a foundation of scaffolding that's like one inch tall, and Jordan Peterson tripped over that and like broke his nose hitting the concrete, you know? Um, so there's no point in like discussing the trans stuff. He hasn't even reached that level. But okay, let's hear him bloviate for a bit more. Or else. But 
there's a conundrum here, to say the least, and not just for me, although I have been banned because of it. Was Elliot slash Ellen a she or a he or Ellen or Elliot when she or he or they, that's Elliot or Elian, by the way, had his or her... Like, like this right here. Like, th the only purpose of this, like, bloviating and time-wasting is to try to, like, appease your infant mind. Um, oh, yeah, it's so complicated. It's really not. You see, Elliot had one name, which was Ellen, and now Elliot has a new name. It's really not that complicated. We, we don't even do this just with trans people. When adults change their name later in life, we call the younger versions of them by their current name. When celebrities have names that we call them by, you call them when they're young by the name they currently go by. This isn't a trans thing. We've been doing this for hundreds of years, ubiquitously. Like, this is not complicated in the slightest. Um, but he's pretending that it is, because it's necessary for him to, like... It, this is the equivalent of, like, Jordan Peterson writing 1 plus 1 equals question mark, telling you he's got a confusing question for you, and then waving the chalkboard, like, really quickly side to side, and you can't see what... you can't, like, make out the equation, so you're like, oh my god, this is really fucking confusing. And he's like, this is what they're teaching your, your, your children in schools?! Nobody gets this! And you're like, oh my god, holy shit, you're completely right. Oh my, I can't, uh, uh, no one could get this. How could a child get this? They're indoctrinating our children with this blurry math, you know? ...or their breasts removed. If he or she was a he, then why was it necessary to have the mastectomy? What? And how could those I am writing to make sense of what I was saying if it was his breasts? that were removed. Were those male breasts or female breasts that were removed? If they were male breasts, then why were they removed? He does, he does know that cis men can get mastectomies, right? Mast Again, JP fans, like this logically fails on every f***ing level, aside from the fact that cisgender men can have mastectomies. This is also a semantic game that has an obvious answer and it's just believing that trans men exist the rock got a breast reduction yeah dude steroid use can give you um uh gyna gynecomastia the rock dwayne johnson got breast reduction well that does how is that even possible i mean first line it, like but and this is only within cis people like obviously it's like oh well trans people exist you know you ever it's it's this particular brand of conservative argumentation where they pretend not to understand something in the hopes that they can convince you that you're as stupid as they're present, pretending to be that's really it like genuinely nobody is confused by this at all no like anyone who is familiar with the concept of trans people not even agrees with the existence of trans people or their identity or whatever you know but just familiar with their existence can hear Elliot Page had his breast, breasts removed in top surgery and instantly know what happened, you know? Then again, there are enough people on Twitter who will reply under, sel under selfies from, um, from tra trans women saying something like, you'll never be a real man or whatever, that, yeah, I don't know. Or, or say stuff like, trans men will never be women, or shit like that. Or like, there, maybe there are enough people who are confused by this, that there is a real market for this kind of, uh, this, this kind of logic. I don't know. If they were female breasts, and had therefore become objectionable, to the degree that surgery, generally reserved for cancer treatment, was required, was morally obligatory, then wasn't Elliot still Ellen, and he still she? No. Because Elliot is a trans man. That's how that works. How could I possibly have written that sentence in any <laughs> sensible manner whatsoever? <laughs> oh, could I? Have simultaneously even... making my point understandably. It's not possible. And not breaking Twitter rules against so-called hateful conduct. My computer would have fried. <laughs> I would have typed the keys, but... Uh... Yeah. Elliot Page just had his breasts removed? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Everyone knows Elliot Page is trans. Why would anyone even care about the headline if they didn't know enough about Elliot Page to know that he's trans? Like, Elliot Page is a celebrity. The fact that he transitioned is known by tens of millions of people. It's not... 
a secret. Was he Elliot then? Uh, yeah. When exactly? Exactly. He was definitely Ellen at some point in the past, or so indicate all his, her, them, their film credits. Again, like this is pretending not to understand the concept of changing your name. Like, you have to be so dumb to watch this and think like, yeah, this is a highly intellectual breakdown of the problem at hand. This is an incredibly thorough, in-depth, collegiate, academic destruction of Twitter's behavior and trans ideology. Will all those have to be reshot since they employed the hated dead name? That... No, that's not something people do. ...doesn't exist, by the way, that dead name category, except in the sensorial and addled minds of a tiny fraction of insanely narcissistic and increasingly dangerous trans activists. What? And also in the eyes of the United States, which has a legal process for changing people's names, as do basically all countries, you can just... Yeah. Uh, let's listen to that again, though. Dead name category, except in the sensorial and addled minds of a tiny fraction of insanely narcissistic and increasingly dangerous trans activists. So again, if you're if you're a fan of Jordan Peterson, like why when he makes arguments does he have to do stuff like this? I've watched older JP stuff. He didn't used to do this as much back then. Loaded language is something that people employ when they do not have the arguments to make their points sometimes. Like, a, a, so ba loaded language is meant to evoke in you a certain, like, emotional and cognitive responses that they can prey on without needing to supply an appropriately convincing argument. Of course, there's nothing wrong with using emotive language if you have an argument to back it up, but he's not actually provided an argument anywhere in this. We're eight and a half minutes in. No argument has actually been provided here. He's just sort of bloviated about the the cosmic evil of the twitter ban and he seems kind of confused but when precisely was it incumbent on me to switch my terminology in regard to elliot slash ellen so that i was not engaging in hateful conduct when you heard about it and how can i describe the fact that someone who was once a woman and really still is had her breasts cut off because she, he, they, their, them had fallen prey to a viciously harmful fad without using the appropriate sex link pronoun and the real name of the real person to whom this was really done. Okay, again, this is profoundly retarded. Hold on. Breasts cut off because someone who was once a woman and really still is had her breasts cut off because she, he, they, their, them had fallen prey to a viciously harmful fad without using the appropriate sex link pronoun and the real name of the real person to whom this was really done. So the only thing that he's... So first of all, there were like 16 bad arguments packed in here. First of all, he implies that there's a real name to a real person, as though saying Elliot Page would refer to some kind of abstract cosmic entity as opposed to the actual person. Like, the real name, like, we're talking about, like, uh, you know, uh, cosmic deities, and it, they have, like, a true name written in the stars or something, um, as opposed to names just being, like, things that we make up. You know, very weird that. Second of all, the only actual argument here is, how could I have not deadnamed him when I'm intent on deadnaming him? That's actually the only argument that he's providing here. His argument is, I am intent on misgendering Elliot Page. So given that that's my goal, how could I have not deadnamed Elliot Page? That's it. That's genuinely the only argument here. It's essentially just, there are two puzzle pieces to this bigotry, and I really wanted to do one of them, so I had to do both of them, otherwise it would have been confusing. Which, to be fair, is actually a legitimate argument for the concept of, like, being consistent with your hatred. It's not really a good argument in favor of the hatred, though, you know? It's more of a, you know, consistency kind of thing. Like, uh, you know, uh, you know, like, you, you, you stay consistent with your, with your bad behavior type deal. Uh, but that's it. 
Also, of course, his noting that um, top surgery is a dangerous fad, blah, blah, blah. He won't support that in this video, obviously. Um, you know, he won't support anything, actually. He's just going to say it. I hate this he, she, they, it thing. Again, it is a, a trick that conservative commentators play in an effort to convince their audience that they're as stupid as the commentator is pretending to be. That is the explicit purpose of that trick. That is it. It's very, very simple. Like, Jordan Peterson is like, and when exactly was I meant to respect this change to avoid triggering the woke mob into murdering me and raping my daughter? And, like, the answer obviously is the same that it's always been forever for all name changes, which is just, when you hear about the new name, just go by that. Like, that's always been the case for everyone. Like, forever. <laughs> like, for all time, you know? Really, the only thing, like, unique about this video is I think that, I, I, I think that it, like, it's, we're, we're coming to the end of, like, the original Jordan Peterson. The original Jordan Peterson was, like, a hateful man who pretended that his behavior was motivated by, like, a legitimate concern of trans activism gone wild or whatever. And I think this is, like, we're just at the hate now. Like, this is just a very deeply hateful video. If the underlying argument is, how could I not have been hateful to point one when I was going to be hateful to point two, and I need to be consistent, if that's actually his argument, again, like, that's, I guess, that's legitimate for the purpose of consistency, but, um, yeah, that's not, not an amazing argument. Just wait, it gets worse. Oh, I'm sure. What is that? with his, her, their voluntary, but unfortunate acquiescence. And so it was impossible to communicate what had happened to my audience without apparently running afoul of the impossible and absurd rules that now hypothetically govern morality itself in the days of the degenerated postmodern and Marxist ethos that we must still, no matter how impossible- Again, every sentence has to be loaded with like 17 adjectives and adverbs. Also again, why is he referring to other people as moralists when he's literally referring to them as degenerates? Isn't that a little bit, uh, a little bit inconsistent? Well, it is abide by or else. And you might object. So the only statement he actually made there was that people don't like it when you misgender people. That's it. That's again, that's the only thing that he actually said there. You guys noticed that, right? All of the adjectives loaded on. That's the only actual thing he said, which is, nowadays, people don't like it when you misgender trans people. That's it. That's the only thing that was actually said. It's astoundingly simple. Ellen slash Elliot is an adult, 30-something, and fully capable of making up his, her, their own mind about such things. And she, he, they are welcome from the liberal and the libertarian position to go to hell in a handbasket as she, he, they see fit, and fair enough, to some degree. But I don't believe it is either merely picayune or inappropriate. So the hell in the handbasket that is being referred to right now, as I understand it, in the case of Elliot, was getting top surgery and saying that he was proud of someone for doing some good work. That's the hell in a handbasket we're at right now. Top surgery having been done to cis and trans people alike for a long time, you know, uh, in terms of like a double mastectomy or just any kind of breast reduction at all, depending on like severity and extent, it's not exactly a new concept. And that's it. Appropriate to point out that Ellen slash Elliot, who is quite a good actor slash actress, is also a ritual model. See, here's the thing that I, I like, again, Jordan Peterson fans, I have to, I have to ask, if he, he doesn't believe that Elliot Page is a man, why not just say Ellen and she? It would be much less irritating. Like, I'm in support of the trans agenda, I would much rather he just consistently misgender Elliot and refer to him as a her, rather than this, like, obscene pretense at confusion that he keeps affecting. He doesn't believe that uh, Elliot Page should be called Elliot or he, so why does he keep throwing that in there? It's not like he actually cares about pandering to woke sensibilities. 
it's just a way of wasting time. It's just a way of pretending that he's confused, that it's that difficult. Trying to reach the 10 minute mark on YouTube. For emulation, being a star with all the privileges and let us point out the responsibilities that go along with that. So by acquiescing to this surgery and by publicizing it, and by insisting upon the sanctity and the moral virtue of his, her, their new, expensive, dangerous, and medically enhanced identity. Dangerous? Medically enhanced identity? Jordan Peterson has hair plugs. He used to have, he used to be balding right here. What? What is it? Dangerous? Medically enhanced? What is he talking about? Medically enhanced identity sounds fucking badass, dude. You know who else had a medically enhanced identity? The guy who talks like a youth pastor but actually just plays tabletop games all day said? The goddamned Adeptus Astartes. And JP would love these guys because they're both fascists. They're both theocratic ultra-nationalist fascists. Uh, it, it all fits, you know? Don't you want to be nine feet tall? I want to be nine feet tall, personally. And by participating in the whole identity charade, Alan slash Elliot has undoubtedly, with his, her, their, so-called... There, they, she, be, we, pee... Yeah. Courage, ...and remember the White House itself has tweeted out every indication of believing in the courage of those who transition, enticed many a poor, confused adolescent girl, most likely, to blame her emergent, pubescent self-consciousness, confusion, and discomfort on... This sentence has been going on for like 22 seconds because he can't stop loading it with more adjectives. Being born in the wrong body and believing that the courageous, self-affirming, and morally admirable root is hormonal treatment, sterilization, subjugation to a lifetime of expensive medical complication, how delightfully profitable is that? And misery. Okay, that was, I think, an actual, like, 35-second run-on sentence. So to translate that for people who don't speak JBP, the only thing he actually said there is, Elliot Page is a celebrity, and therefore, Elliot Page's decision to transition publicly and stand by his transition is going to encourage more young people to also transition. Which is true. And fine. Again, you can take away all the loaded adjectives. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you're making him sound more coherent than he was. It's just, it really is, it really is funny how once you, like, translate what he's saying, like, there's actually nothing there. They're completely empty sentiments. Like, no meaning is conveyed outside of the contempt that he has for the subjects. But that's just an emotional state. Like, if, if that's the only meaning he wanted to convey, no argument, then he might as well just say, I hate them! I hate them, I hate them. Like, I would watch that, dude. A JP video where he's just, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And it's just like that for like 20 minutes, dude. Yeah, that's an amazing video concept. He should do that. I hope that's next. And I believe firmly that Ellen slash Elliot or whatever the hell her name or his name is. It's Elliot. It's legally Elliot. And also, that's just how names are. It's, it's not how you can, can look it up. It's on Google. Bears moral culpability for that. And finally. Oh, um, obviously he's deranged and it's funny, but the actual like underlying principle of this um of this video is um Nazi shit. Um he's essentially saying that Ellen Page is a degenerate who she with her magical uh trans ideology, death aura, whatever, um is, is like corrupting the children or whatever. That, yeah, basically that's it. Um, it's basically just like JQ tier stuff where degeneracy is being spread. Um, I, I genuinely, it's, it does sound a little bit dumb. I do think that trans people are like the Jews of the, of the like modern fascist scapegoat in America. Um, going after Jews themselves seems a bit like pastiche, like a little bit cliche, you know? A little bit, you know, just, just a little bit of a redo. Um, but what they needed was like the idea of a subversive, um, ideologically degenerate population, they could pin on, like, the crumbling of America, and trans people have kind of taken that form uh, in, in, in the modern America, yeah. With regard to the final phrase, criminal physician, I must say that I've had some post-coital, so to speak, 
regrets about that phrase. Excuse me? It is clearly the case that the surgical operation performed by the butchers who butchered Elliot slash Ellen was legal. So, was it criminal or not? Remember when uh, Republicans or conservatives used to pretend that they believed in, like, adults making free choices of their own? And then, like, a person in their 30s wants their tits removed, and it's, yeah, they're a butcher, you know? Were the operations undertaken by the fascist physicians <laughs> who carried out the Nazi medical experiments legal? I saw this on Twitter. Yeah, he compares a consenting adult going to a doctor for a double mastectomy to the Auschwitz-Birkenau um, Nazi doctors who would, like, sew Jewish orphans together and slaughter children in front of their parents. Yes. Under the laws of the yeah. time. But were they criminal? I'll leave that question up to you to answer. You know what else? is immoral, but technically not criminal. Here are some things that are immoral, but technically not criminal. So first of all, the Holocaust. Okay. Second of all, cutting me off in traffic. Third of all, I really, really, really don't like it when they overload rice in the rice and bean burritos. I think that the ratio between those two should be like a 40-60 split, and sometimes you're getting like 10-90s, and that's just not okay. Um, the Holocaust, still on the list. Jeez, um, let me think. Uh, I really hate it when my local Target doesn't have my favorite kind of air fried chicken nuggies. They're basically my favorite. Um, oh, yeah, and when people are uh, don't walk down the escalators or walk up the escalators, and I just have to like stand behind them, but they're too big for me to walk around them, uh, that's a little bit also like the Holocaust. It's not technically illegal, you know. Oh, yeah. People who don't hit the like button on my live streams. Not illegal, yet, but deeply immoral. And ho Holocaust-esque. Ho Holocaustish. Holocaustish. And further, perhaps it might be objected. What about the damage done by hypothetically leaving those confused about their identity to dwell in their confusion? Aren't we morally obliged to intervene? And I would say... No. Why? Well, first, do no harm, as the Hippocratic Oath. Remember that? Well, that's currently what they're doing. So. Insists. And second, it has been a matter of historical consensus that sins of omission are less egregious than sins of commission. What? Jordan Peterson tearily explaining this to the doctor who's about to perform an appendectomy on somebody whose appendix burst. Was he always this religious? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, quick reminder. Uh, quick reminder that um, uh, 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 gender-affirming surgery, like top surgery or whatever, bottom surgery, they have uh, rates of regret that are equal to or less than most elective surgeries. So all elective surgeries have rates of regret. Anytime you can choose to have a surgery or not, you know, like it's not like a, something being done to immediately save your life right then, right now. Like anytime it's a choice that you make, there will be people who regret it, whether it's cosmetic, whether it's not cosmetic, you know, there will always be people with some issues. Um, and the rate of regret for people who get gender affirming surgery is about the same or less. Yeah, I think knee surgery has a very high regret rate because there's a decent chance it doesn't fix the issue. Excellent source for that stuff, yeah. But keep in mind, Jordan Peterson doesn't care about any of this because to him, the existence of trans people is a fundamental, like, degeneracy. Um, which is the reason why I harp on about them wanting to put you guys in camps. Uh, it's just true. That your existence isn't a problem that can be solved with improved medical technology, more rigorous psychiatric evaluation, or anything else. Not to him. Uh, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing, no level of legitimacy that would translate to his ideology. A total of 27 studies pulling nearly 8,000 trans patients who underwent any kind of gender-affirming surgery were included. The pooled prevalence of regret after GAS was 1% over 
Overall, 33% underwent transmasculine procedures, like top surgery, and 67% transfeminine procedures, like, you know, whatever the fuck those ladies get. The prevalence of regret among patients undergoing transmasculine and transfeminine surgeries was 1% and 1% respectively. A total of 77 patients regretted having GAS, 77 out of nearly 8,000. 28 had minor and 34 had major regret. And a lot of the people who have regret, by the way, the regret is um, they feel like the surgery could have been done better. Like it's something that will go down with competency, you know? Um, some stuff is like relatively well done or adjusted. Like, you know, top surgery. I think we kind of got the ball on top surgery. Um, uh, facial feminization, we ha kind of have the ball on. A lot. Some bottom surgeries are a little more complicated. Um, Based on this review, there's an extremely low prevalence of regret in trans patients after GAS. Yeah. Regret can mean a lot of things. It's like how a lot of the people who detransition do so because they can't afford to transition anymore. Thus, leaving someone with gender dysphoria, no matter how warranted, and perhaps it is in a very tiny minority of truly unfortunate cases, to suffer the consequences of the theoretical mismatch between soul and body, is less of a risk ethically, personally, socially, and philosophically than the extremely active intervention that constitutes so-called gender-confirming, another hated phrase, surgery. Why does he, why does he say that? Why, hated, like hated by you, you should specify that. Like if I was, if I, if I was, if I was like having a conversation about like types of sushi and I was like, ah yes, nigiri, the hated menu item. Like, I, wouldn't that be confusing? Wouldn't people assume that I don't mean I personally don't like nigiri? Or that I might be a sushimi man? But they, they would might they might think I'm referring to some kind of like broader I might also point out that the trans surgery enterprise is now a three hundred million dollar per annum growth industry, rate of projected expansion fifteen percent per year. Good. Let's uh, nationalize healthcare. Uh, next point. All good? We good? Okay. Projected increase by 2027 to $750 million per year. That's, that's really not that big, though. Like, for an entire wing of the medical... Th like, that's not even really that much. Like... By 2027, 15% per year. Projected increase by 2027 to 750 million dollars. Yeah, that's not... Okay, so one zero point two five percent of Elon Musk's wealth or something? Okay. Wow. The hair transplant industry is set to increase to 10 billion by 2026. Wait, really? Is that true? Yeah, wow. The hair transplant industry, which is, by the way, gender-affirming surgery, it is, uh, nearly 10 billion by now. So, okay. Well, there you go. Where's, uh, where's JP with the hair plugs? Jordan Peterson hair plugs. There it is. This dangerous surgery what happened to do no harm we don't know what the consequences will be of this malignant marxist nazi-esque hairline intervention we have to respect people's biological hairlines if i refer to jordan peterson uh do i at what point exactly do i refer to him as a man with a straight hairline as opposed to a man with a receding hairline what point does that transition another hated term take place <laughs> I, I, like if you apply his logic to literally anything else it becomes immediately clear how fucking stupid it is um yeah dude he kind of glowed up though man i was gonna say like he lost weight good for him but a lot of this was probably like the drug shit right yeah a lot, this is probably not the healthiest weight loss yeah well whatever now nah, he looks like he's dying now I think right now, like, I think that right now Jordan Peterson looks the way he wants to look, which is like a Nazi witch doctor, you know? He, he looks like somebody who would stand trial and be held to account for, like, 
not just the murder of like 4,000 queer people, but like dissecting them to see if he can find like the bean shaped uh, cancer cell in their brain that made them do evil, you know, like some kind of wacky shit like that. Um, I feel like he, he looks like what he wants to look like. Dollars per year, an expanding enterprise in a time of global uncertainty, time to invest both in the requisite surgical skills and perhaps in any industry associated with this vicious and unconscionable fad, primarily entangling, as such things so often do, the youthful and female. Isn't that a concern, intersectionalists? Not when push comes to shove. What? Or ideology to scalpel. What? This doesn't mean anything. What? Also, wouldn't an intersectionalist be, like, one of the first advocates for the idea of trans integration into feminist ideology? Why would, he, why would he be attacking the intersectionalist there? The intersectionalist would be the people most likely to disagree with him. With, it, with principled ideological disagreement, not with, like... Yeah. Like, he's attempting to do the whole this you hypocrisy bit, but he doesn't know enough about anything to pull it off. Is that not a true moral hazard? And I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated I would the rather rules. die. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll... <laughs> Heck you, commie scum. <laughs> that should be a sub alert. Up yours, moralists. Yeah, no, that, ah, dude, that should be, that should be a sub alert. This ha it has to be. We'll see who cancels who. <laughs> There's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I have probably contributed to that while trying to use, understand, <laughs> no, and master fuck. that horrible, toxic platform. I was trying not no to doubt, cough. I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a relief in some real sense to be banned. And I regard it under the present conditions as a badge of honor. Okay, up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Is a top tier dono sub alert. It's it. The audio is perfect. It's done with a professional setup. It's fun. I have to. I'll I'll, liter I'll literally do it later today or like during the weekend. I'll clip it out. That's just too good. Okay, what? Final analysis? I have no final analysis. No arguments were in this video. He's genuinely brain damaged. I hope I can meet him in person one day. JP? Because I just want to, like, make fun of him, like, passive-aggressively and see if he picks up on it, you know? I don't know. God. Do you think he got banned on purpose to promote Daily Wire? Uh, yeah. I think that his, um, ban from Twitter was deliberate. The few weeks before he got banned, he was amping it up with increasingly, like, irrationally TOS-worthy behavior, like harassing other people, being, like, increasingly angry and, like, weird and prejudiced and stuff. And he didn't seem to be doing it for, like, any good reason, so I feel like it was a promotional stunt. And then, like, this happens literally right as he joins Daily Wire. It's just a promotional stunt for him. That's it. It's that simple. And conservatives being the fish-brained dullards they are just fall for it every time, you know? Just insane.